Yeah. Ah, fine wee whistle doggy and a fair credit to the vital spot. No disgrace at all in her being second hand. Oh, not at all, Captain. You know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if that was off the Aquitania, one of those boats. Ah, most likely, Doogie, most likely. You know, I would give you a wee shot, but, well, you haven't quite got the delicacy of touch that's needed. <laughs> and I suppose the next selection will be gems from the Maid of the Mountains, eh? <laughs> Pass yourself down here, just come up for a breath of air. No, I've come up to tell you to stop playing with that whistle. You've been blowing the damn thing all the way back for Tober Mori. Aye, Joe, it's a bad day when engineers think they can give orders to the captain on the bridge. Aye, and it's a worse day when the ship's officers start behaving like Burns simply because they've got a new second horn whistle. Burns, eh? Did you hear him, Dougie? You are a witness to that man's insubordination. It's a fair disgrace, Captain. After you buying it was five paper pounds out of your own pocket. <laughs> there were other things this vessel need apart for that. There was nothing wrong with the old whistle. Ah, uh, my job, well, you listen to nothing wrong with it. You couldn't, you couldn't hear it above Sonny Jim's snoring. That whistle didn't have toot, it just coughed apologetically. <laughs> Aye? Well, at least I didn't have to restart the bailer every time you blew it. <laughs> ah, now we're getting at the truth, eh? Got to do a wee bit of work for a change, instead of sitting reading your trashy novelettes. Work? I've been that busy restoking that bailer, I haven't had time to sit down. I'm telling you, you've blown enough steam through that whistle to take us from here to China. <laughs> You'll have a bigger coal bill than the Queen Mary. Mr. McPhail, being only an engineer and not really a sailor, you will not be aware that ship's masters are obliged to let other vessels know they're there. Where? She was tied up in Tom and Mori for two years and you were still doing the damn thing. That is a damned lie. Doogie, doogie, tell him, tell him. There has not been one in essential toot. No? And what was that wee tune you were playing a minute ago, eh? Toot, 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 toot. Did I not have a 20,000 ton oil tanker square across my bows? That would have been the very devil to pay if I'd run it down. Ah, the Board of Trade are very strict with folk that sink oil tankers. Apart from the widows and orphans it causes, the Tun Council says it messes up their beaches. Look, I am not come all the way up from the bowels of the ship to bandy what's with either of you. I'm here to give you an ultimation. One mere toot and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Dan, no. There's a limit to everything. A man with your qualifications doesn't have to put up with insults like that. <laughs> aye, aye, Sonny Jim. So you've come down to say tie tie. Well, as a matter of fact, the captain sent me down. Typical, typical. He wants me to stay, but he's not man enough to come down and apologise to me in person. No, he has to send the common deck hand to do it for him. No, not exactly. He said I was to watch that he didn't steal anything. <laughs> he said what? Half the stuff in here's mine to begin with. Aye. That tea caddy there with a picture of Abby Burns on it was sent to me all the way from Hong Kong. Remember? Aye. Aye. And that kettle, that's mine. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What? These are mine. <laughs> the man's living in the past. That's his trouble. You can't speak to an engineer like that. No, I've only got to pay up my union dues to have the whole collective strength of the working classes behind me. I'll have them blacklisted for Port Dundas to Pearl Harbor. Then, so will you go up and give a doogie your hand with the unloading? I will stay here and see that nothing goes amissing from the ship's inventory. Take my advice, son, and you go amissing. Don't waste your youth in this old steam-driven chanty. <laughs> ah, by Tom McPhail. Say what you like about me, but don't stop Miss calling the smartest boat on the thread. <laughs> Every time she leaves Lloyd, that wee bell goes off like an alarm cloak. <laughs> I hope we've got part McPhail without coming to fisticuffs. I'm going to get Doogie. Take more than Doogie to separate me. Separate you? I want to see the fight. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? No, 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 no. Ah, oh, it's not right for the master of the vessel to fight with a common stoker. Stoker? <laughs> and a Glasgow one of that, not a word of garlic in your mouth. I'll have you know that I am a certificated tradesman. And I have seen your certificates. Oh, I. 
One's for singing in the BB choir and the other is a warning from the sanitary. <laughs> You've been interfering with my personal effects. You think I didn't know, eh? Oh, it you'll be sorry to leave a fine job like this to become an unemployed mass. Is that so, eh? Well, for your information, engineers of my calibre are snapped up by the luxury cruise boats the minute they set foot ashore. Oh, I can just see you working on a luxury cruise boat, eh? Acting the way you do here, sitting at the captain's table, picking your teeth with a screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't let you up the gangplank, you're that oily. I'm telling you, men have come up to me in pubs and offered me jobs aboard luxury cruise boats. <laughs> Aye, you're the one that's going to suffer. You'll never get another engineer to work in this old tin bucket. What, with the night schools turning them out with their thousands? Ship's engineers, they're a drug in the market. Aye? Well, I'm giving you a warning. One of these days you'll be puffing past the luxury liner when a lump of coal will drop in your nut. <laughs> and when you look up, I'll be leaning out of the rail laughing at you. Laugh! <laughs> ah, well, enough of your damned impertinence, MacPhail. Now I'm murdering you. Leave this vessel at once. Don't worry. I'm gone. I, uh, I'm gone. And take your trashy novelettes with me. <laughs> <laughs> not right, Cap. We've been stuck here in Port for more than a week and all for want of an engineer. You should never have spoken so rough to Dan McPhail. Oh, I had to make an example of him, Doogie. Or well, the next thing, Sonny Jim here would have been flouting my authority. Aye, that's right, Doogie. I've got a wild violence streak in me that's just waiting to come out. <laughs> Certainly taking its time. That's what you think. You were only there last week when I swore at the captain. I don't remember that. Uh, you weren't there either. Ah, <laughs> well, just the same. You've had 12 engineers applying for the job in as many days. And not one of them has wanted to take it. Look, uh, they weren't suitable for the job. None of them had any strength of character. How could you tell? They all took one look at the engines and left. <laughs> you can always tell a man's character by the things he laughs at. <laughs> You'd better find one soon, or the publican will not let us in here again. He says we've frightened off half his customers already. What? Well, you see, there's been talk that you are seriously thinking of shanghaiing an engineer off one of the other boats. Ah, the devils! <laughs> I'll have him locked up for slander. Take it up, I will. Anyway, it would be, a, it would be an awful job keeping them locked up all the time. <laughs> Ah, it's yourself, is it not? Ah, ah it's me. Doogie? Uh, hey. Sonny Jim. Dad? Captain. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I'd, uh, I'd offer you a drink, but I've just changed all my money into potatoes. <laughs> potatoes? <laughs> potatoes? I'm off on a cruise to Rome on Tuesday. <laughs> Ah, you got yourself fixed up then, eh, Dan? Ah, oh, no bother. It's just a matter of signing on at the appointments, Baru. <laughs> Half pint. They did the rest. That was quick, eh, Dan? Aye. Mind you, I could have got a tanker or something like that straight away, but they didn't want to waste me. 
Oh, it's as well not to be too hasty, Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, what line did you say it was? A, a line, eh? Uh, I well knew it's a new line. You'll, you'll know I've heard it. No, it's, it's boats don't sail for the Clyde, you see. No, it's, a, it's the majestic line. No, no, I can't say I've heard of it. No? Oh, well, you can always tell their boats by their gold-plated funnels. <laughs> Did you not try Canard or the P&O lines? Oh, naturally, yes. And they put in their offers, but, eh... Uh, well, no, the Majestic line had the best superannuation scheme. They'd just done up my private cabin in Bird's Eye Maple. Oh, you, you've made the wise choice, John. There's no doubt about it. Bird's Eye Maple, eh? Well, we'll be guy chirpy in there, eh, darling? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, I'm glad you're fixed up, yes. <sighs> How's the new engineer? Ah, well, uh, I just haven't made my final selection yet. You mean two or three have applied? Oh, Dan, I mean, there have been that many applicants for the job, we haven't been able to move out of port for a week. Still, I managed to cut the shortlist down to 12. 12? Ah, uh, you know, Dan, it's a revelation to me how many middle-class mothers want to send their boys to the coasting train. Boys? Well, it's none of my business, Captain, but I wouldn't have said that looking after the vital sparks engines was any job for a boy. Oh, you, you misunderstand me, Dan. Of course, they were boys when the ambition took them, but, well, uh, after they had been through the university and got their diplomas, well, they were grown men. University diplomas? And they want to work aboard the vital spark? Uh, nice, quiet, civil-spoken lads they are, too. There's one of them who's had a bit of experience seeing he has worked on a boat before. Oh, I and where did you get him for? Oh, well, no, I think I mind him saying that he was a third engineer with the Majestic Line. <laughs> the Majestic Line? Aye, the Majestic Line. You'll have the same again, Dan, if Sonny James has the money for it. Thank you, Dr. I shall decline the invitation since I want an early night. I've got to be down in the morning to be measured for my ducks. What, Dan? <laughs> My topical uniform. <clears throat> so I shall just say good night. Good night, Dan. Night, Dan. Captain. Ah, uh, don't forget to send us a postcard from Rome. By <laughs> Jove, and Dan McPhail has done well for himself. To think that this time next week he'll be strutting about in a brass buttoned uniform playing deck tennis with the first-class passengers. <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> oh, Captain. I think we've got one. This time, I think we've got one. Has he seen the engine? Aye. And what did he say? Well, he just looked what you would call uh, enigmatic. Then he just grunted. By Jove, Dookie, that's a hopeful sign. All the others swore we've got to... <laughs> this one, Dookie. I was up seeing the owner, and he said that if we don't get her back on the trade, he'll lay her up and pay us all off. Well, Captain, we're doing our best. Sonny Jim is entertaining him down in the forks. I thought you said it was pudding. I plumped off but you had that. Do you not mind? It was just before the grilled kippers and just after the bacon and eggs. <laughs> yeah, do you not fancy a wee chocolate biscuit, Mr McCluskey? Oh, no, no, thanks, son. It would give me indigestion. <laughs> well, I suppose that'll just have to see us through and we'll get my tea. <laughs> Hello there, Admiral. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, welcome aboard the Vettel Spark, smartest boat in the trade. Ah, oh, Joe, it's a man's life you've picked, full of interest and adventure and foreign travel. What's the money like, Admiral? 
I want to know, uh, I'm glad you asked me that. It's uh, a uh, uh, man's life you've picked. I'll be requiring three weeks paid holidays. Oh, please yourself, Mr. McCluskey. But you'll not want them, I'm telling you. No, no, it's just one long holiday from start to finish. <laughs> if Billy was here, he would tell. Should, the last man we had, we had to maroon him on the clock light house for ten days to make him take a holiday. <laughs> I, you see, it's the holiday towns we take the cargos to. Cargos? Aye. Oh, but I've got nothing to do with cargos. No, no, devil a bit. No, you just confine yourself to the light duties like stoke and the boiler and load and cement bags. Oh, hey, hey, don't fancy that. I mean, I'm not that robust. Oh, well, uh, you can forget about the cement bags and it's for the boiler. Well, uh, well, when the last man we had was feeling a bit tired, he would just shout up the tube and me and Dookie would be down to help him lick a flash. No, I don't know. I mean, it's all... I'll tell you what, Admiral. I'll give it a try. Oh, by Jove, it's a man's life you've picked, full of interest and adventure and, 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 uh, and foreign. <laughs> Just one wee matter, Mr. McCluskey. Not that I'm asking you for references, mind you, but what if you could just kind of casually mention some of the other boats you've worked on? Me? I've never been a boat in my life. <laughs> but you said you were an engineer. Well, I'm an engineer. My last job was with a corporation. I was a maintenance engineer. Only sewage pumps. <laughs> ah, but, uh, I mean, uh, that's not quite the same thing as being a ship's engineer. Ah, let me tell you a wee secret, Admiral. This is a wee trade secret. Engines is engines. Doesn't matter what kind of engines. Ah, but ship's engines is ship's engines. Ah, but I've got an infallible system for getting to know any engine I'm asked to work on. I just... Take it to bits and put it together again. <laughs> Take it to bits, eh? I say this for you, you you're a worker. I think I've got it licked, Admiral. I think I've got it licked. There is not a bolt or a screw in that engine that I don't know. Uh, and the fish have a nodding acquaintance with some of them too. Well. <laughs> <laughs> don't bother about them. I was going to fling them away anyway. Just fancy trimmings. Any engine that I'm asked to work on, I want to get it stripped. Right down to bare essentials. Ah, well, you see, it's just that the, the last man we had the... Uh, I think maybe you and I better come to the understanding, Admiral. We'll have no more chat about the last man. Because either I am the engineer in this boat, or I'm not! Ah, oh, Mr McCluskey, you are. Just that I was wondering if, uh, when you were going to put the engine together again. Oh, now that I've got a hang of the thing, oh, how long take us about ten minutes? No, I really have worked up an appetite. Well, I'm sure if Sonny Jim could run out and get you a, a meat pie, you could eat it while you were working. A meat pie? I'm going to aim for the tea. <laughs> what, what, what about the onions, sir? Eh? Hey! Hey, Mr. McCluskey! Hey! Come on. Tea! Hey! Yes. Hey, you can't go for your tea just now. Uh -huh. Hey, man! You've eaten every bite of food in the boat. You'll have to come and fix the engines. <laughs> oh, if you ask me, that McCluskey's not coming back. Uh, the same thought crossed my own mind four hours ago. He must have had his tea by this time. <laughs> Captain, I have to say this. Now, we'll never get those engines put together again. 
unless you apologize to Dan McPhee. A apologize? Me? Never. He floated my authority, and I've got my parade. Oh, here's Jim. Well, I phoned the pump station. As soon as I said McCluskey, they knew the name right away. He worked there right enough. Did they give you his home address? Well, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, they said that if we ever found out his address, would we let them know? Because they've got a sewage pump he left lying in bits. <laughs> the devil! The devil! Men like that should be locked up, going about taking engines to bits and wrecking the economy. Yeah, by Jove. I wouldn't be surprised if he was in the pay of a foreign power. <laughs> Where is he awaiting? Oh, he's a man of many griefs, Sonny Jim. And he's a way to drown his sorrows. Oh, the poor soul. I think we should help him. Uh, no, no, Sonny James. At a time like this, a man likes to be alone. There's just an outside chance that Dan MacPhail might be in the pub. It's a matter of pride, you understand. <laughs> Hi, Don. <laughs> Back from your Mediterranean cruise, eh? Aye. By Jove, that was quick seeing you only left on Tuesday, eh? Ah, you know, the Commodore of the line was saying as much to me. McFaley says you fairly make this boat shift like the hammers. <laughs> More of an excursion than a cruise, eh? Aye. Just to get my horn in, so to speak. Ah, well done. Fine see you standing there, bronzed by the Mediterranean sun. Eh, what kind of weather did you have? Oh, much the same as you've been getting yourself. <clears throat> and uh, how did you get on with the passengers? A very nice class of people, you know. Very nice indeed. Ah, yeah. Know that I'd much to do with them, mind you. I know, they'd just be on and off, eh? <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, Jan, I'm glad you enjoy working the luxury cruise boats. Oh, well, no, I, I wouldn't just call it what not, it's uh, mere of that push button stuff, you know. Have you got an engineer yet? Ah, well, uh, it was a difficult choice, Dan, a difficult choice. But uh, I've taken one young lad on, on probation. Oh, yeah. He's just uh, qualified with a string of initials after his name. Ah. Awfully educated he is. Knows all the Latin names for things like engine oil. <laughs> Captain, uh, I think it's time I tell you the truth about the luxury cruise boat. Well, <clears throat> please yourself, Dan. Please yourself. <clears throat> well, new to be. To be quite honest and frank with you, Captain, it's... It's the women. The women? What women? The female first-class passengers. They'll no leave me alone. <laughs> you tell me that now? Aye. You see, it's the glamour of the uniform that gets them. And the ones with the titles are the worst. Oh, I've heard some of these titled women can be gay coarse. You know, the other night I was sitting in the boat's cocktail lounge, sitting a black and tan. I was just smoothing the crease out in my white ducks when one of them came out and sat beside me. Captain, she... she put her hand on my knee. Oh, the devil, eh? Oh, I, I, I didn't tell you anymore. Oh, no, no, Dan, I don't want to hear it, eh? Oh, by Joe, not the sort of thing you would get in Tobermory. No. <laughs> You see, the trouble with me, Captain, is I'm... I'm what a novelette would describe as... dangerously handsome. <laughs> Just what I was saying to Dougie, my very words, Dad. Aye, oh, good looks is a curse. Should think yourself fortunate, Captain. <laughs> Aye, maybe so, Dan, maybe so, but, uh, Oh, well, well, I tell you, I've got my own problems. Now, this young lad who's working the engines, oh, now... He's a first-class engineer, no doubt about that. He's very cheeky. What? He's got a rough tongue, Dan. He doesn't cheat back to you, does he? Oh, by Jove, he does. He swears at me in Latin and Greek. He's fluent in both. <laughs> That's a disgrace. I mean, just because he's educated, he's got no right to cheat the captain just because he's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
think you know Don I'm thinking he's too enthusiastic about the job yeah he's always stoking up the boiler building up the steam pressure you know, the other day, I blew the whistle, and damn me, did the blooming thing not fly off and hit a chartered accountant that was rowing past? <laughs> and then the blooming thing sank to the bottom of the river. Oh, the shame. <laughs> and after you paying all that good money for it, <laughs> still, you know, it's that boy's cheek that gets me. I mean, that thing's kind of all right with uh, old friends, men who've been shipmates for years. I mean, then you can stand a bit of light-hearted banter, eh? With no offence taken on either side. Oh, just my very words. If Dougie was here, he would tell you. <laughs> Old friends don't mind that sort of thing, eh? No. Barman. Give us a couple of whiskies here for me and my old friend. <laughs> I don't like the wild legends, the big foam and breakers would get me the shakers, the Clinton Canal for me. <laughs> well, there she is done. Uh, she hasn't changed a bit, Cat. <laughs> Not a bit. She's lovely. I'll just away aboard and have a wee look at her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is that Dan back then? Ah, he's back, Dougie, he's back. He decided to apologize to me. But don't mention it. Did you tell him about the engines? Oh. 